Wow. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, I just want to start off by saying I'm not like a public speaker or a politician or anything. I'm just a guy trying to tell a story. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, my story starts in Bergen County, New Jersey, right across the river. Uh, growing up in Jersey, I had the unfortunate experience of witnessing firsthand the attacks of uh, 9-11, 2001. Shortly after, I found myself on the yellow footprints of Paris Island, South Carolina. I wanted to help people, you know? I wanted to make a man of myself and make a difference. In the Marine Corps, I excelled. Physically, mentally, academically, I finished the top of my class. Very top. Could have went anywhere I wanted to go. Uh, I volunteered for this unit that was meeting in Okinawa, then headed to Afghanistan. Because of that, I had about 30 days to leave, so I went back home to Jersey, thinking I was, you know, a hero, tough and cool, right? Then I made a mistake. I dropped the ball. Uh, I found myself in a bad part of town uh, with bad people, up to no good. And uh, I got hurt. I got in an accident. Got my ass kicked, to be honest. Fell into a coma. The doctors told my parents I had I had 10 minutes to live, you know? And after 52 staples across the head, three plates in my skull, I woke up for whatever reason. And, you know, I was thankful to be alive, obviously. I don't remember a thing about it, but you know what? I was depressed. I was sad. I was hurt. I was in pain. I went to Bethesda, Maryland, and I felt helpless. I couldn't help some of my dearest friends, people that I, I, I you know, was supposed to be leading. So, you know, I was in Bethesda. They had like these things strapped to my head, had me like do all these number recognition things for my head. And none of that stuff was working. Medication wasn't working. I was just, I was depressed and it wasn't working. I walked by this, this bar one day in Georgetown and it was a help wanted sign. So I was like, hey, another story, you know, if, at 19 years old, I made a lot of dumb decisions with credit cards. So I was, I was in debt, you know. So I was like, all right. Let's give this a shot. And that ended up being the best rehab for me because for the first time since I got hurt, I was happy. I was doing something. Remembering a drink, pouring stuff. I was actually memorizing, working my brain, but, you know, just and something else other than just like mindless number recognition and stuff like that. So when I got discharged, I entered this uh, speed bartending competition. It's a 30-year-old charity bartending competition in D.C., and I won. And then I won again, and then I won again. They had to retire me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but you know what? Once again, I got an opportunity to, to just make myself happy and make myself successful in any little part of the world. And from there, I was like, I gotta do this thing. I, got, I could do this thing. I could take this job seriously. So where do I go from there? Boom, back up. New York's always looming large. It's the place I always wanted to be, right? So uh, I ended up getting recruited to work at uh, uh, one of the highest esteemed cocktail bars in New York City called Employees Only. And that's when everything started to take off for me. And I like, people started taking me under their wing. I learned my craft, hospitality, uh, everything, cocktails, this and that. It gave me a platform to, to, to be the best at what I do. So I started from the bottom. It reminded me of being back in Marine Corps, starting from the bottom you know, as an apprentice, working years and years and years to get to a principal bartender, which is the highest rank we can get. As a principal bartender, in 2011, employees only won the world's best cocktail bar, which is like the Oscars of like the bar world in New Orleans, you know. Well, these things exist, guys. Uh, well, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then I just came back from London a few weeks ago where we were honored uh, Drinks International, this international drinks publication. Uh, we were uh, fifth on the world's, world's bar, like, list after being open for 10 years, when in New York, you know, less than 3% of businesses survive after 10 years, and we're thriving and, and rock and roll. On a personal level, I have six speed bartending titles. I uh, have 12 cocktail uh, competition wins all over, culminating in 2012 when I was in New Zealand, and I, uh, I had a, finally had a chance to represent my country in a cocktail competition in New Zealand called the Cocktail World Cup, and I won the whole damn thing. <laughs> So I can now stand here and say I'm a world champion bartender. <laughs> you know, but where do you go from there, right? You know, like, like, I know this is fun, you know, yeah, attend the bar. But, you know, why am I holding this hammer? <laughs> so I know a lot of you all have been asking that. But um, it's a project I worked on. Uh, it's a tool to crush ice, make juleps or swizzles or something like that. 
And in 2012, I had this charity project where I made 100 that sold out in 12 different countries in, in one week. And they went to rescue dogs because uh, I'm a big dog lover, you know. I like to give them a second chance, much like <laughs> I got a second chance. Uh, and then, let's see, what else did I do? Um, 2013, my journey from apprentice to principal bartender was documented uh, in a film called Hey Bartender. I ended up on the red carpet of, of Hollywood. What the hell am I doing there, you know? <laughs> I, you know? I'm just doing things I never thought possible. And most importantly, I'm doing them and I'm happy and I'm proud and I was given an opportunity. The place I work now is giving me every opportunity to open up my own bar. It's going to happen this coming, this coming year. I'm, I'm going to start exploring and they got my back. They got my six. <laughs> you know what I do isn't ideal, but neither is being a Marine, right? <laughs> Guys, my name is Steve Schneider from Employees Only. I'm a former U.S. Marine. I'm damn proud of what I do. Guys, for the people who have gone out and did their thing, you know, you got my respect and love, and you guys are my heroes. So thank you all. Cheers.